Bob is over in Helena, man, years oh, and oh, yeah. years and years and years and years. Yeah, he was a very effective lobbyist and very effective at his work. Uh, so, well, you but know, anyway, he was there as uh, not as a politician. I didn't mean that, but as a par uh, or a partisan person, but to study the process of legislation. Oh, so you weren't elect an elected person? No, no. I was not. No. no. Oh, okay. No, I, so you wouldn't have known Bob probably then. Yeah. yeah. The, my father was in the legislature. Okay. Uh, he, he served uh, for 16 years there in the 50s and 60s. Okay. And, and uh, uh, his grandfather ran for governor as a Republican. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I know your name is really familiar, you know, and I, I don't know why because I'm sure we haven't met, but, but until well, now. <laughs> because of John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. So anyway, he also got involved in the Burma Project and actually chaired my board and was donated a lot of money. To, we got a million books over to Burma. Yeah. And he went uh, several times. In fact, one time I got sick and, well, I got cancer and I couldn't go for the operation and uh, he took the group. And he and his wife, Carolyn, uh, got heavily invested in that project. Oh, good, and, yeah. Uh, but they have, it's not their first time in Asia. He was a uh, Fulbright, was it, in India? In or, India. Mm -hmm. and, oh, great. Uh, so they traveled a good bit and on their own before they came with me. And But he, uh, so we, we got really close during that time. She became ill and died just a couple of years ago. But Carolyn was a wonderful person, uh, active, mental health, League of Women Voters, uh, kind of a leadership sort of person. Uh, she came out of a farm background in Oregon, and uh, you guys met how? Oh, we met uh, at the uh, student religious camp, YMCA, YWCA camp uh, at CBET, that, the sort of thing that uh, grew out of, uh, well, in this case, proceeded the course that we had with Bruce Wood and the life and teachings of Jesus. Yes, and, and you and Carolyn met on a comparable uh, uh, and set and, up in and, and camp. They had, they had a summer camp, and yeah. Carolyn and I met there. Oh, that's <laughs> I, I don't know how you and Steve met. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, actually, Steve, you actually, had a very different life than Joanne did. Well, mm -hmm. actually, you know. Um, he and Bob, my first husband, were fraternity brothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew that. And I remember I was going, in fact, engaged to somebody else, another Sigma Chi, and I do remember that he said, you've got to meet this new pledge, Steve mm -hmm. Tanner, you mm -hmm. know. So I remember meeting him, but he doesn't remember meeting me. <laughs> that was it, when you were still an undergrad. Yeah, yeah, I was still, yeah, and you were a freshman, and I was Back to 1949, and way back when. So, so, that I, so actually I met him, but you know, didn't know him, and then... Um, there are a lot of Sigma Chi's are all alike. <laughs> I know. So anyway, we were skiing, Bob and I, was, Bob was still alive, and we were skiing one day, and Steve skied up to us and said, do you remember me? We are, I'm a fraternity brother of yours with Bob. And sort of, that's kind of the second time, right, Steve? Yeah. And then, they, then both our spouses died, and um, we, we met again, and... We, they died within a month of each other, I think. Yeah. Joan was October and Bob died in November, and we both skied, you know, so we'd see each other on the ski hill and so on. And so that's kind of as I a brief version. As I heard the story from Joanne Orvis, <laughs> uh, I called Bill Reynolds to see, check out this guy, and uh, he said, "Yeah, Steve's good guy." Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. When I figured they were they were good friends, yeah. did you remember Jerry Sto or Jerry? Tucker, Jerry Stoic? Uh, both of them, and they, know, and they Jerry, both passed they both, yeah. Well, Jerry, we had a pharmacy up here, and he, he knew Steve, uh -huh. and uh, he kept saying, you guys, you should meet Steve Tanner. Well, actually, we had met, and I didn't like him. <laughs> yes. I didn't like him yes. at all. <laughs> and they, he, he, he kept saying, <laughs> and he would say, Jerry said, oh, he's a prince of a guy. You've got to know him. I said, met him, don't like him. You know, so so it, so then we had another mutual friend, uh, <laughs> young, really young. You probably do you remember Holly Hollinger? Brandon Absolutely. Taylor, yeah. His wife. He was they a were, yeah, yeah, good friends of ours. So anyway, his daughter-in-law Dia said, "Oh, Joanne, you've got to meet him." And I, I've met him. So you're <laughs> she, getting from all sides. <laughs> she said, she said, 
I have to tell this because she said, well, if I, if I had a dinner party, you know, and, and had you and Steve and everything, would you come? I said, yes, if you ask about 14 other people, <laughs> people and don't make me sit by you because I don't like it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It is. It, and I don't know. Now I wonder what there was. <laughs> well, 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 there are times. There are times when I think, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Why did I do that? No. 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 That's all right. So now you can tell your version. No, I, I'm not going to change your story. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how we met. Yeah. And Steve, you had a sporting goods in Wholesale, Billings? Wholesale sporting goods, right. And you had that for a number of years, right? Yeah, yeah, 25 years I was in it. Yeah. yeah. And you were successful when you sold right. out right. and yeah. basically had moved here moved and up here. retired. Right. right. So. Okay. So the house was kind of empty after your spouse died, hadn't it? Right. Well, okay. we lived up above. We didn't live in this house. Oh, we that's right. We owned the house above here. Okay. And then we sold it after we got married and, and built down here. Well, when the first time I came here, it was pretty new, and yeah. uh, you were still adding something, as I recall. Yeah, it's 11 years old now, so yeah. doesn't seem possible, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> it goes, yeah. So. Well, anyway, what I'm trying to put together for myself, and David agreed to join me in this, is uh, a sense of Montana voices. There's an international perception of Montana as a recreation area, increasingly like Switzerland, a place where rich people invest and will spend $25 million for a house on Flathead Lake on an island. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal carries an ad for this place, which you know more about than I do, yeah. every week. Oh, really? That real estate agents yeah. put that oh, in there. Oh, that's the one down That's there. Abbey, a guy by the name of Abbey down on yes. Cedar Island down there. It originally exactly. was on the market for $79 million or $75 yes, million. Yes, they dropped like it that. down. It's a big drop. Right, a big drop. <laughs> 39 million. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I, I take the Wall Street Journal and read it every day. It's yeah. the only newspaper I read. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so the real estate section in, is always interesting to me because it talks about Montana values, mm -hmm. uh, real estate values. And, uh, you know, we're up there with Florida and Kiowa Island. Oh, yeah. But, you know, is that the perception that everybody here has is a $25 million house? Is that... <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Is well, I'm saying there is a view a of Montana of now that is world class among people of affluence. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Probably because of one or two properties. Well, no, no there's right 200 there. properties. Who's the uh, Dick Doyle's daughter? Uh, yeah. Went with Schwab. Debbie? Les Schwab, not Les Schwab. No, the investor down in San Francisco. Uh, well, he's a wealthy guy. And he established uh, uh, the minimum walk-in is a million dollars mm -hmm. to pay for the lot. And then you build a house. That's out of Hamilton. That could be Schwab. That's Schwab. Yes. Yeah. It is Schwab. Yeah. It's not it's out of Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Dick Doyle's daughter yeah. uh, was the finance manager under him and became very successful. She took over the Montana Foundation in between jobs. Now she's with Jor, J-O-R-E, I think. Uh, as a, on the board of directors, and she's one of the 50 wealthiest women in, my, in the oh United my. States. I didn't know that, did you mm. see? Mm. No. no. Just a kid, 60, <laughs> yeah, years, right. 60 years old. But, yeah. you know, she did it on her own. She didn't mm. marry and Dick didn't give her money. And anyway, um, there is that view of Montana as a world class, and that was not the case when we were kids. No, no. And, mm. it, and I'm interested in uh, people who read YouTube or you know, watch YouTube or and we may put a kind of blog or site together. Because Sasha is quite experienced or more experienced and he helped a lot. He was on the board for the Burma Project also because he had lived there for mm -hmm. nine years mm -hmm. and as a diplomat and for Yugoslavia. And but he's not a spy. <laughs> Say again. He's not a spy? Yeah. He is not a spy? Well, he was trained as a spy. Oh, okay. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I, think he's very good I don't know whether to believe right. this or not. <laughs> yeah. well, I can't tell. <laughs> but you know, Serbs have an increasingly different cachet. They are great tennis players and basketball players and they're world-class competitors, mm -hmm. uh, women and men. And uh, 
So there's that side of Serbia I knew nothing about when I, you know, we had neighbors in Target Range who oh, were, bo were Bohunks. The Pomajevicis? Yeah, Pomajevicis. Uh, well, they were Croatians. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, next door neighbors. Uh, so at any rate, we're putting what for me is Montana Voices that uh, is primarily a personal thing. Nobody's sponsored, nobody's paying us money, and it's uh, like our, I want a memory that lives beyond me of what it was like and what we've become as Montanans. I've, like David, we've had our lives largely outside of Montana, mm -hmm. but we both share uh, investment in, in, uh, in the place now and in what forms it. Uh, people internationally and nationally see Montana through our politicians or uh, you know some radical something that attracts people's attention but I I know Montana is a place with a lot of different voices with different there are not many blacks or yellows or browns or mm -hmm. a few reds yeah uh, but it's a a place that's complicated and it's hard to summarize what Montana's like and, mm -hmm. So I thought uh, Sasha suggested, why don't I join? Because he has some ability with this to record it. Uh, David and I first talked about it, just kind of taking notes, and then we'd email each other. And, and uh, I wanted the class of 48 to have more of a record of who we are now. So most of the people I'll be interviewing are from our class. And I've already had two people. Um, Mary Lee was my class in Target Range. Oh, was she? And uh, I one, thought, I a thought year she, behind. Yeah, a year behind. And then she went to the Catholic, Catholic yeah. school. But, uh, and then her brother was a kind of a friend, uh, a neat guy. He also played football like uh, uh, Jim Smart. So we're going, uh, we'll see Bob Brown, who is not in our class, but mm -hmm. was a senator. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to get mostly conservative voices because the uh, perception of Montana is uh, now Gin Forte and the nature of him and as a Trump place. Montana's a, you know, a, a red state mm -hmm. and not a blue state. I know. And uh, I'm curious where, I grew up a conservative and I think most of us thought ourselves as conservative and uh, when I ran for the Senate the first time, I ran as a Republican, and I lost by 20 votes, and, but then I realized that Missoula Central Committee and I were not gonna get along. And <laughs> <laughs> so that's aside from me. Yeah. Montana's but, uh, interesting. We are conservative red, and we always vote, vote for the Republican for president, but yet we have Democratic governor most of these sessions. So. It is interesting. Yeah. You know, it's not Wyoming and no. it's not Idaho. No. And, uh, no. So I'm, I'm digging into that, not as a, as an intellectual thing, but it's sort of a passion and an emotional thing. Why do people have these feelings they do? And uh, so I, we just got two basic questions, which we want to talk. One, how do you feel about the national scene? Is it something you're comfortable with? And how do you feel about the Montana scene? that you see him as different. Uh, and again, I'm not looking especially necessarily at politics, but at values that culture. You can do all the talking. <laughs> no, we differ <laughs> a little of bit. Of course, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't, we yeah. haven't dug into that a lot, and yeah. feel free to say whatever you feel. Yeah. Like yeah. David, is anything more you want to say? No, no, I, I'm interested, in, as Steve immediately said, we differ. I'm a, can you, can you describe? Uh, oh. You want me to? You want sure. me to speak? Sure. <laughs> no, yeah. no, we're differing on whether neither one of us voted for Trump. You know, we we couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to vote for either party. You know, right. Could she? You know. So I abstained, and she had voted for John Kasich. John Kasich, <laughs> just as a oh. write-in, basically. Okay. You know. I knew there was yeah. not a chance, yeah. but um. but again. She is very distrustful of Trump, and I think I don't like a lot of things he's doing, but I, I like a lot of things he is doing. You know, right. I okay. think he would keep his mouth shut and <laughs> tend to business. And he, he's trying trying to do good. You know, that's why how for the reason he got elected. So, so. 
How do you feel about the cabinet, his appointments in the cabinet? Uh, the cabinet? I think, the, I think he's just got some awfully good ones. I agree okay. with most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the sense that this is uh, an administration you've been waiting for in their values? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Again, as I say, I like a lot of things he's trying trying to get done, and hopefully he can accomplish some of them. But is there anything especially that stands out that you think he's trying to get done? Well, the taxes, change the tax code, you know. Okay. And again, we have to do something with the health code, you know, with the health service, and hopefully he's going to address Medicare and Social Security and and Medicaid, you know, something has to be done on that. For whether he's going to tackle it or not, he's got so many things on his plate right now. Whether he can tackle all changing all those in four, yeah. if he's only got four years, I don't know. You know yeah. So, yeah, it takes quite a while. Oh yeah, it? no, it's took fifty or sixteen just, years. This whole Clinton got quite a bit done in four years. Yeah, or yeah. six, uh, eight years. Did uh, jo Joanne? And your feeling on these? Well, my feeling is I hope it's only four years. <laughs> uh, my feeling about him is a total embarrassment. Every time he opens his mouth, every time he tweets or whatever he's doing, he's, I mean, as a person, he's re revolting to me. And as a politician, I think he's a neophyte and I think he's in a lot of trouble because he's never, he's not really that involved or has not been with politics. He's used to having his own way, being sort of a dictator type and getting things done by whatever means. I, I totally dislike him and, and I cannot believe that we watched all the primaries and all the, all the um, what am I trying to say? Debates. Debates, yeah. debates thank you. Yeah. The debates and I, I thought, well, weren't there 16 others to yes. choose from? And, yeah. I, and I, th I thought, no way does this yeah. fellow have a chance. So. I don't know what happened. I, I still can't believe there are that many people that would, I mean, you're a sensible person, Steve, but there are a lot of people that, that just look at, look at his basic character and think, yeah, we just want to drain the swamp, we want a change, and we don't care what it is, just so it's a change. But why didn't they vote for somebody better? Because I mean, nobody that. better was running. <laughs> well, running. no, they didn't no. win the yeah. primary, but. Yeah. There were a lot of candidates. There were, there were a lot were of some good, good candidates. candidates. Yeah, there were some I, good I, candidates. I agree with you about Kasich. I like Kasich. Oh, I would have voted for him. I would have voted for Kasich. You know, I thought you did. Well, well, you I, just, I did just that stage. Oh, did you? I thought you were. I couldn't vote for either one. <laughs> well, I, I didn't like say it. I did vote. I would have voted if he had gotten on the Yeah, I would ticket. have voted for Kasich. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a very sensible guy. and yeah. he, Actually, I like Hillary, too, not because of some of the negative things, but because of the, how maybe I feel about her the way you do about Trump. Yeah, exactly. She can do things that I want, but that's beside the point. Uh, go ahead, I, how about Montana? Uh, the legislature is mostly Republican. Re Republican. And has been for two, three decades. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Do you think uh, the Montana scene in that sense is, and the legislature represents how most Montanans not the Missoula people necessarily, who Joanne and I grew up with, but people over on the east side and and now around the uh, valley here. No, it's a very divided state, but I think it's becoming more liberal all the time. Do you? Yeah. Which is not necessarily a good thing for you. Well, it's not good or bad, you know, it's just what's happening. <laughs> so, okay. again, again, they have to go to the middle of the road, you can't go too far one side or the other, yeah. that's what we're doing now, you know. But we've had a Democratic governor, and Bullock is a good, he's a decent governor, you know. I don't They're both okay? Schweitzer was okay, I mean, there, yeah. there are problems, Every, nobody's perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. Well, you knew Roscoe. Uh, Roscoe, yeah. Too. You liked him. I liked him, yeah. yeah. How about you? Is there any difference between you on? I think we're pretty much in agreement on the state thing, aren't yeah. we? Right. I yeah. Don't, yeah. I I knew um, Roscoe quite well because yeah. he's from Libby to begin with. Ah. Yeah. So I was fond of him and thought he did a good mm -hmm. job. Didn't like Judy that Judy Mart when she said, "I'm a lap dog of the what is she of the mm -hmm. lap dog of." Ooh, do you remember her statement? No. <laughs> she had a malaprop. I know. But she's. 
She had no political experience. No, either. she didn't. And um, she, what did she say? I'm a lap dog of. Well, it was something. Arco, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, something. But, oh, of Arco? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, I, was think, I think that's right. Well, she, she, she had uh, uh, sole uh, property to them, hadn't she? I think so. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would lived in Billings for a long time. Did she? Did she? In fact, Judy worked for Seals Hardware, if I remember correctly, for, for some time there. Yeah. How oh. about other kind of social issues in Montana? Is, is there progress, or is it going downhill from your point of view? Um, you, well, you know, like health, uh, kids, education, uh, churches going to, or is Montana people becoming more the way you would like them to be? Or? I'm not. I'm not that good at reading the, the Montana okay. scene. I'm really not. I'm okay. more interested in the national, I guess. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with our government for yeah. the most part. Yeah. I am too. When you speak about, this is changing the subject a little bit, when you're, you're interviewing Bob Brown? Yes. Um, he, they know each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I have such respect for him. And you, you say he's a conservative, but I think he's really a moderate from what right. from mm -hmm. what I can see. And he always voted his conscience. He did not follow that strict party line, which I abhor people doing. I think they should be more moderate in their approach to everything. Would you call him a model politician? I would. In fact, you know, uh, he, he, who did he write? He wrote quite an article in our paper against Trump and got really done for it from yeah. many angles about I wanted to write, write to him myself and never did and say, good for you, mm -hmm. you express my feelings exactly. So I, you know, I watch who he advocates for and that's kind of the way I vote. Okay. You could tell him I said that. He would know, he knew Bob quite well. So he might know me by Joanne Helding, you know, I've met him, he wouldn't probably remember me except through Bob, but okay. I have utter oh. respect for him. So I got to know the kids, and they, you know, his kids now have kids, and they're they're so sweet people. Yeah, yeah. they are yeah. really sweet. Uh, it's all of the earth. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, you lived in Billings for a number of years. Correct. Now you're living in Kalispell, and you and Joanne have been discussing the Kalispell community, but how would you compare? Billings and Kalispell, or especially eastern Montana with western Montana here, and how, what patterns do you see there? We, we are a divided state. We hear nothing of eastern Montana, and eastern Montana hears nothing of us. It, it stops at the continental divide, I think, you know. But no, there's no, no news from Billings ever comes up here in the papers, our papers, and I think it's the same way down there, you know, so we just have, unless who, friends from Billings come up, Corning, do you remember Jim Corning? Uh, yeah, we, uh, okay. in fact, but they're from Billings, you know, and they come up and give us all the gossip, but that's the only right. way we, we get the news of what's happening in Billings, you know, so, yeah, it's a completely divided state. You know. I don't know what the politics are over east at all anymore. Billings, when I was there, it was quite conservative. Whether it still is, I assume it is. Did Billings uh, business leaders think of themselves as kind of the, the head leaders of Montana business? Say again. Did the Billings leadership? My folks were there in the teens, and mm -hmm. uh, they left in 1920. Mm -hmm. They came up in homestead mm -hmm. there, but they lived in Billings when they were not on the homestead. And their sense of Billings was that there's a the business leaders there that they were truly the Montana leaders. 
that Butte and Great Falls and Missoula were secondary compared to the capability of leaders in, in uh, buildings. And that was you know, almost a century ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How about during the time you were there and now? I can't speak for now because I really don't know. Well, like Jim Corning. Uh, he was a statewide figure. He was a statewide figure and a businessman. Yeah. And he would choose to live in Billings, I'm sure, rather than Missoula or Great Correct. Falls. Yeah, he still lives in Billings and has a place in California and a place on Flathead also. He, he, and he comes up here for most of the summer. So he go in. Yeah. When I think of Billings business people, I think of Corning mm -hmm. as kind of more typical. All right. And you don't find somebody like him much in Missoula. No. And I don't know about Great Falls anymore. No. My sense of Kalispell, you're getting big money here. People come in. Oh. Uh, Our economy is changing so quickly, you know, really. Yeah. You know, and they're is, not actually investing in the society of Montana or the culture of Montana. They're just here for the for the splendor of it. No. Splendor of it. <laughs> And because it's culturally the thing to do if you're a rich person. Right. Mm -hmm. Go to Whitefish Lake and yeah. Friday the second area. You know, up in the Hamilton, the Bitterroot. You know, that's do you feel that impacting on the culture around here? Are those folks actually playing any role? Or Not that I'm aware of. Do you notice no. that? No. no. Uh, you know, actually, we're, we're not really socially engaged very much anymore. We don't go to church. We don't, we don't belong to clubs anymore. And we're sort of isolated here, you yeah. know, and um, we don't, we don't socialize probably as much as we should. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of that we're, time of our life. And there's always some health complication or other that keeps us from getting very involved. So how do you feel about the, speaking of that, of the hospital, the health care here? I think it's excellent. It's excellent. I think we're okay. very, very fortunate. You know. So you don't feel you're in a backwater at all no, compared no. to Great Falls or? Oh, no. no. I, I think we're I superior, think, I probably. I think we're superior, probably. Oh, my, my grandnephew is now married. They both did their MDs at, through the Whammy program mm -hmm. at, at University of Washington. Okay. And they worked their internship in the Midwest, and their ideal was to come here. Mm -hmm. And they're here, and yeah. they're in scouts. And they've got three babies. and. And they're happy, and they got a place on Lake Plain, and yeah. but they're working all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's the biggest industry in the area by far. Is it now? The biggest employer. Yeah. And I, I do think the recreational advantages here pull a lot of really good people. Yeah. Don't you see? Oh yeah. Um, Is the first one skiing? Uh, when you say recreational advantage, is skiing the number one, or what would you? Oh, maybe golf. What do you think, Steve? Probably golf and hiking in the park is really big. People skiing, come here to fishing, hike yeah. and fish. I don't think the skiing is that big a draw, do you? I think of generally they, they say, yeah, there's both winter and summer recreational advantages here and that probably brings people. But I'd say maybe golf is the biggest. Do you I, have it's hard many, to say. How many golf courses? Oh, you know, I'm not a golfer, so I don't. Three or four? About five. Is five. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Missoula has this marathon. And yeah. Missoula is one of its main industries now is recreation mm -hmm. in terms of self-help sports. Mm -hmm. right? And then maybe Kalispell is the same way. I think it is. Well, Jimmy. you were just there this weekend when the marathon is going on, right? Yes. Did you take in any of it, watch any of it at all? I couldn't avoid it. <laughs> oh. I was on Higgins Bridge. And oh, <laughs> over here? There were a whole ton of people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Which is, you know, I used to jog and uh, yeah, I know. And run. And you wanted us to join you in the, what was it, the lilac yeah. thing? <laughs> and the minute I said yes, you backed out. <laughs> <laughs> She's got gotcha. you. She's got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Gotcha. You don't remember that, but I said, uh, okay, but give us a year to get in shape and we'll join you. And then I never heard another word. Was it a Bloomsday or in Missouri? Bloomsday, that's what it was. You're yeah. afraid I was going to beat you again, <laughs> weren't you, John? And another race. <laughs> Have you told him about our high? I chickened out. <laughs> no, Just twice I did drop out for. Uh, I'm sure for health reasons. Or I had an Achilles tendon go out on me. 
Did, did you tell David about our great high school no. race? Well, no, him. no, that's your story. <laughs> it is. She claims she doesn't remember this. I but don't, but except you tell it all. We were going down to the high school from Paxson. Uh, she, she lived downtown, and her dad had us, her mom had a store downtown, a music store. So she, it was natural for her to go down there. And I went from time to time on the bus from high school. So it was like the fifth grade. And, uh, or six, and somehow, uh, I don't know if we walked together very much, I doubt it. Uh, she generally didn't like boys, I generally didn't like girls at that point, <laughs> uh, at least. That's, but somehow we were together, so we challenged each other to run, what, four blocks, and she just beat the hell out of me. <laughs> I was way back in my memory. I, I don't remember that at all. I really don't. <laughs> So I, I rationalized, well, girls mature early. <laughs> <laughs> so I see, that's why he didn't want to challenge me in the boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> that would have been fun. You, you both mentioned the really good health care here. Uh, is your feeling that the health care system is working well for the this entire area? You, you mean as far as is the insurance part of it or the care the doctors are able to give? Or? Well, I'm, I'm, I guess the ultimate question is the health care that people get. And, and, and by people, you mean everybody? Yeah, right? everybody. Or, okay. And, 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 and is it your feeling that, uh, how, how is your feeling that the health care system is working uh, as, as best you can see in this area. To me it is. I wouldn't go elsewhere, would you see? No. Me. I wouldn't go other. Our neighbor now next door goes other places for her health. Um, why, I don't know, but, but tell, you could tell about the hospital here. Well, you would know. All the, it, there are 250 the, doctors in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful hospital. Quite apart from nurses and nurse practitioners. Yeah. I was astonished. But so they got to make a living. Somebody's paying them. Oh yes. But I assume most of that is Medicare and Medicaid. Or do you think? I don't know. Well, there was just an article in the paper on on the Medicaid patients, and they were basically break, breaking even on the Medicaid pa patients in in for the last. Well, I mean, year. I realize that now yeah. in, in Humana, the, the yeah. private insurance is yeah. very important for. Mm -hmm. Okay, but no, they're profitable. I mean, they're buying up. Everything you know, they want. They want to own everything. Basically, they're, they are. They, they have offices now in Polson. They have one here in Lakeside. They have satellites in Libby, uh, Whitefish. Now that the hospitals have joined, the Kalispell and Kalis Whitefish have joined. I think. Mm -hmm. you know? I think so. Yeah. No. But Excellent. you don't. Either of you have any grandkids uh, around in school? Mm -mm, not close. Mm -hmm. No. Hers have graduated from college, mine has too, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Her, her grandchildren have grand, graduated from college, and so I have one grandchild, and, and he they just don't graduated have, They from don't college. have kids yet. Pardon? They don't have children here. No, no, no. 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 Great. No. So. Mm -hmm. Alan Birgo has 24. Grandchildren, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. uh, and as you know, uh, a, uh, Mary Lee has a passel of kids. She's eight and I don't know, children, and I don't know how many great grandchildren. Oh, I imagine. He's got one son with 12 children. Oh, my oh, gosh. <laughs> which son is that? Not Paul. I don't know. What no. Cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he lives in Idaho now. He was south here on the res for um, trying to make a living on 40 acres. Oh, my. With a whole bunch of kids, and mm. I'm sure he had his wife working hard. Uh, Speaking of the res, are you interviewing Gordon Garish at all? Well, or thinking uh, about I, want, I thought about it, and uh, it, it, I kind of wanted to get conservative voices or people who oh, okay. identify with Montana as a red state. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for liberals to talk to each other, but that's not what Montana looks like to the nation. When you look at a map, it's okay. coming up red most of the time, right? And I'm well, we have 
John Kester as, as, as our senator, and, 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 and we've had a long record of, of uh, senators who have been uh, liberal, Jim Murray and Burton K. Wheeler for a while in his life, and Mike Mansfield. But we also yeah. had Jeanette Rankin, a conservative. Right? <laughs> yeah. Lee Metcalf was in there. Yeah. And and I, yeah. I think it's a really interesting state. I, it's it's yeah. complicated. Well, yes. and, and, and I think the politics in Montana is, is oftentimes fairly personal. Um, they, More uh, than Wyoming or Idaho? Or? Well, I think that's true generally of the Rocky Mountain states. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, there what do you mean by personal? Uh, I mean that uh, that people uh, are are uh, voting for a particular person uh, as much as for an ideology. Uh, we're becoming, I, I think, the state's becoming more ideological, but uh, but the Western states have been small enough uh, and recent enough that they didn't have the strong partisanship that was in the Eastern states. Mm -hmm. Now. Montana, the interesting pattern we're going through is that increasing partisanship and, 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 uh, and we have money flowing in uh, on both sides uh, every time we have a, a local race, and, you know, and, and, and so uh, we're getting to be like the, the rest of the country. But uh, uh, we had, our, I think, uh, our fair share of eccentric uh, uh, individuals, and, mm -hmm. and in our particular case, the domination, but for some time by the Anaconda Company, yeah. and uh, strong corporate influence. Uh, anyway, Duff's a good friend, as you know. We keep track from time to time, but he's also, he really is ideological. Yeah. He doesn't really study politics. He studies people, I mean, his patients. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he's, he's not frankly, very well informed about the issues apart from what he knee-jerks about. And uh, I like him and I like being around him and I'd say exactly this if he were sitting here. Yeah. Uh, I, I see where you're going, but you want conservative voices, right? To yes, uh, because I think I, there's a big conflict among mm -hmm. conservatives mm -hmm. as to who, what it means to be mm -hmm. an uh, American and a Montana conservative. I'm not sure people agree at all as I, yeah, I'm not sure I'm a conservative either. So I I <laughs> well, Joanne, I wanted to come back. You mentioned you liked your health care. So what, do you see a need for change in health care policy with regard to Medicare or Medicaid or insurance, that sort of thing? Um, uh, what, what, what is your feeling as to how that's working out for you and how it's working out for... Montana as a whole. I don't know about Montana, so I, I, it's working out well for me. I do think I do think our nation as a whole needs to get under some kind of a of a health care policy. We're the only large country in the world that still is, does not have a good program for people that need it. Would you use the word single payer as a concept, or I, I don't like it, but I don't okay. know. There may not be an alternative that, and I'm I'm, I'm prepared for that, but. What word you're comfortable with to describe a model system? Well, name a few because I don't. I, <laughs> I mean, what are my alternatives? I, I like. I like that we can choose our own our own okay. healthcare provider. I like the fact that we can choose our own, or maybe have a choice in in uh, insurance right. companies. But that seems to be, really leaving, doesn't it? it seems to be disappearing. No. If you listen. To other states, they said mm -hmm. companies are leaving a lot of the eastern and southern states, and there's no choice but maybe one. And what do we have? Three or four is about it. Right. Yeah. In Montana. Do you have four? Uh, do we think we have four? I can't Blue, recall. We I, I'm. I we had Humana, and Blue Cross, Blue Shield. There was another one that's supposedly dropping out. I can't tell you either. Yeah. Sure. Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Humana. Yeah. Do you have Aetna? Anybody have Aetna? I, could, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Okay. On Medicare. It's so for so good to us, you know. Basically, yeah. I, I can't can't fault it. You know, so. Do you have a secondary policy? We yes, both yeah. do. Blue, yeah. yeah, blue cross uh -huh. blue shield. Yeah. 
what's the name of the company? Blue, Blue, Blue Cross, Cross Blue Shield. Shield. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're wonderful. That, but Montana's very fortunate as far as I can see. There's all the doctors will accept Medicare. You know, this is not true in any yeah. other state, you know. So we're we're conditioned to just going to the doctor and, and Medicare takes care of us along with our supplement. In fact, Joanne just had her knee operation and she paid pittance for it, you know. So far, I so haven't far. gotten all my bills. Yeah, but it, it, you won't get any more. No, probably <laughs> no, so, not too many no, more. I tried. You did have your operation. Yeah. It's, that's why I didn't get to bills to, to Joe Reynolds. I just wasn't getting around yeah. that well. And yeah. But you're walking now pretty well. Yeah, so. I'm doing fine. So it's a yeah. successful operation. Yeah, I'm doing fine. And you had knees? No, I had a knee uh, or hip operation. I got a new hip. Both hips or one? Just one, and I got a new pig valve in my heart or something. <laughs> yeah. Good, we've done okay. We've done well with the health care providers and yeah. with Medicare and we've done pretty well. I got a question on education. We haven't talked much about it. Uh, do you think Montana's holding its own in relative to the rest of the country, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary education, or are we going downhill or doing better? I think we're holding our own, whether we're doing better or not, I can't say. You know, but, uh, <coughs> You're, we're, we're all alumni uh, of the University of right, Missoula, yeah. and it's had some it's real It's having problems setbacks. right now. Yeah, it's having and problems. Sheila Stearns is acting president right. now, yeah. uh, whereas Bozeman just keeps going, going mm -hmm. gangbusters. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, do you know any why that has happened? Well, I think there's a transformation to uh, engineering school in Bozeman is very big and they have a very, very large nursing school. Uh, <clears throat> do you think, do you think when I think about your um, relatives who live in Bozeman, they have a feeling that Missoula is just real all, what, what's the word, I want to say hippie, I mean goofy things, what, what do I want to say? Hippie. They're real people, but, you know, yeah. with real far out ideas, and mm -hmm. so they don't want to send their kids there. Yeah. Okay. That's how his relatives feel. And I, I hear that around, around here, too, that people don't want their kids going to Missoula because it's too liberal and t too far out, right. and they don't like it. I, I think that might be part of the reason, besides as you're saying the engineering yeah. thing. But, but um, you know, I used to say that 50 years ago oh, yeah. when the hippie movement began. But Missoula kept the university kept growing yeah. faster than yeah, Bozeman I until know. it was fifteen thousand people, and now suddenly they're down it's, to twelve. It isn't. And uh, Bozeman is. I don't know if it's leadership or, or what's going. If it's yeah. leadership inability or they're not using good um, recruiting tools or what? Do you know why they're going downhill? I don't really. I talked to Bill about it uh, quite a bit. And, well, you know, he's he, so involved with the university. And he's very involved. And uh, it, I don't know if he's got a single answer. And I, I'm not here to talk about that. It's a, it's a fascinating subject to me because I'm really invested. My dad went on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, me, let me ask a little different question of each of you. Would you compare the education you received with the education your children received and the education your grandchildren received as best you can de see? Uh, did your children and grandchildren get this as good an education as you, better or, or worse? Uh, how would they compare? Well, my, my son did not finish college, so I can't, I can't comment on that. My daughter went out of state after her first year in school, so I can't compare there either. And my well, but how, how did you feel about the elementary school and high school education that they got as compared to what you got? My own children? Yeah. I, I felt they, they did well. I said they had a good education. And it comparable to what we had? Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how, how did you feel? I in, feel the same way. Compared, comparing your children grandchildren's education, a grandchild's education. It's, <laughs> education has changed so much from when, when we were in school, you know, there entirely different courses and, and the internet and everything, so it's, it's very hard to compare, you know. I don't think the 
kids are getting much American history anymore, even in the grade schools, or, or any history, are they? <laughs> I don't know, or yeah. economics. That's the economics, other thing yeah. I, don't, I think they're lacking in right. now that we, we had to take civics and we yeah. had to take some economics. No, maybe that was college, but. Um, well, some, a lot of us took the equivalent of economics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in Missoula. But I think so, you, you two went to a school and got the best grammar. Oh. English than anybody ever ever known. No, well, we had great English yeah, teachers. Yeah, yeah. Lyle Noble. Uh, yeah. When did you leave yeah. Paxson though? Seventh grade? Sixth grade? When uh, I, I, I just couldn't stand you anymore after the quiet. sixth grade. So I had to go out yeah. with Donna Coster yeah. in the seventh grade. Did you did you have Mrs. Holgren then? You didn't we did. have uh, I had she was there all the time when I was in school. But you didn't have her for English and grammar. No, not as a teacher. She no, was she a, was a principal. Did I you? think I just had an outstanding education as far as the grammar goes with, with her because she was out of the being principal thing, why I don't know, and was our, our grammar teacher. And oh my goodness, she was so tough. I can still, she had all these little rhyming ditties, little songs to help us remember things. And I took a test on TV not to, or on the email the other day about, and they said, wow, you're up among the top seven per three percentile or something yeah. you did really well and I said thank you Mrs. Holgren yeah. that's the reason you know <laughs> she beat us and and the other thing she taught us that I don't think kids get and maybe not important was parliamentary procedure you weren't there for that but we yeah. all had to be president or secretary or something and we conducted it as if we were in the legislature yeah. and so we did learn Robert's rules of order which is gone from me now but it was really, really amazing the things that we learned. Yeah. So is it better or worse now? I don't know, it's different. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say it's, yeah. it's different? Well, whatever. And they know so much more than we did technologically and uh, things that we weren't, had no clue about at the time and so. My granddaughter's in uh, Lewis and Clark, which oh, is, is considered she? a good grade school, uh, elementary school. And she's had a superb teacher. Her teacher's as good as any teacher I ever had. And she's had it here for two years. So that school takes a lot of pride, as does Paxson, mm -hmm. in getting the best teachers uh, and uh, offering the students. There's a, uh, she has a lot more options than we ever had because of various federal state programs for special needs kids. Mm -hmm. She's had a special need of attention deficit. And mm -hmm. You may remember she said she's all over the place. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, my son is really pleased that Good. we happened to buy that house and it's in that district. She he had a choice of Paxson or Lewis and Clark and Lewis and Clark were better than Paxson mm -hmm. in the minds of So speaking personally to answer that question, I think kids are in some districts are having more choice than has ever been the case in the past for what they want to. She's already had an opportunity to start coding, computer coding, which I thought was so complicated and difficult you had to be a graduate from MIT to code. <laughs> yeah. But now they're offering it for bright kids. And what grade school. is she in, third? third? She just finished second grade. Just finished second. But she's on the daily scene all the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and I'm sure your grandkids are done. Yes. Uh, do you have any questions that um, come to your mind about your own sense of what's important? I wish you to, you, you should have clued us in to some of the things you were going to ask us. We'd be better prepared maybe, but you probably wanted it off the cuff and more right. natural and so. Because um, I think what people stay off, assuming they're comfortable, uh, is um, often really what you mean. I think I don't have any questions for you that aren't just personal questions right. like how's your wife and <laughs> you well, know how are your children and are you coming to the luncheon on Tuesday? <laughs> I am. I'm going to be there. And yeah. But you know we never have too much, we never have enough time there to do the time. So yeah. Not there but. I don't know what your pressure, time pressure is now. You said you had an appointment. Right? No I said Steve had an appointment yesterday. and. 
and I did too, and I forgot it. No, I have to get I have to get back out to Crystal today. Okay. How was the smoke situation smoke. when you guys came through? Was we it? Didn't, we were still driving 65. I was driving, so I know how fast I was driving. No, but did you come from Libby this morning? Yes. Right. Was Pretty the smoke stuff. bad out toward well, in the? It was it, we, we ran into a fair amount of smoke at, uh, especially Thompson Lake and. Did you? And, and so forth. It it, uh, it was clearer both in Libby and, and once we began to get closer to Kalispell. But the... the uh, Rogers Mountain fire is a real fire. And there's a huge one on the Thompson River too that's way much bigger, but... Oh, oh is that right? Yeah, I think they said a thousand acres now. It just blew up. Rogers, I think, is pretty well contained. I talked to a neighbor <clears throat> from Crystal Lake this morning and said, do I, am I going <clears> to <throat> be able to breathe because I have to get out there and... and um, she said it was much better this morning. So, that's. Did you notice that I around Happy's Inn? And there wasn't. You know, there were no traffic problems. There yeah. were no cops. There yeah. were no, uh, it didn't feel like it was a significant forest fire. But when you mentioned Thompson, that's where there was a lot of smoke. Yeah, and there was quite a bit of smoke. We came up from Trout Creek. Not, we were, not, not so much smoke that we needed lights and uh -huh. anything okay. less. But, but. Okay. but enough smoke that there's a real haze settling down. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you familiar with Bend on the Thompson River? Yes. The area called Bend, yeah. where there's quite an, an encampment used. That's where the, they were oh, kind of now. the center of it. They had a huge fire, as you know, on, on the Little Thompson last year. Yeah. I wondered if that and impacted you. I, I knew remember you were. I, I'd planned I couldn't stop and say because I was working on that book, yeah. and I had to get back. And I, uh, and but it I, wasn't close to you, though, was it? Or was well, it? Well, it had blew up a couple of weeks after I was there, and it came within a few miles. Mm -hmm. That's and it did burn up a lot of small cabins there. Not, but it never reached the area. And I don't know why. If it, the wind changed, you know, you can't really put those fires out. I know. Unless I know. the weather changes. There's so many fires right now, I guess. They say they're shorthanded with their aerial <coughs> um, work and so on. But Let's gossip a minute because I, I did want to be.